and make sure that that is on. Yeah, okay, we are currently recording now. Let me let's jump to the to the um, web campus here. Uh, and let me pull up the chat. Whenever I switch to sharing screens, it always makes my chat disappear. So there we go. Um, so for the quiz, um, where is the quiz? Maybe it'll be under grades. Well, hold on <laughs> one second. I, I think I have to uh, go into the actual settings here. So I, I don't want to uh, share that in case there, I'm not sure what exactly it's going to pull up first. So let me just open that on my end and see. So the quiz is scheduled to show the correct answers after February 10th. So the, the correct answers will be available. Um, but let's let's go through through it real quick. I think I have the nope, that's not the right button. Um, and it's not gonna let me do it like in in that. Still getting used to the web campus settings here. Okay, all right. Um, let me now switch to the share screen now that I'm on the proper one and bring bring the chat back. Okay, so this was this was the quiz. Um, now I know that there were a few individuals that had some uh, legitimate reasons for for missing the quiz. Um, so I'm not going to give out the exact answers. Um, but if you want to see something more in detail, then certainly you can email me or come to office hours for sure that would work. Um, and we can go into more detail. Uh, but I don't want to, you know, since somebody hasn't hasn't uh, taken this yet, uh, I don't want to give away the answer. So number one is matching matching the, uh, the argument with the given fallacy. So um, you just match. Uh, so this one is actually question one is going to be similar to, well, is similar to problems that I prefer when I'm when I'm writing the exam. Um, so maybe take that how you will. Um, but again, I I don't want to give give out too information on that for the individual that's still or individuals. I have the list here somewhere that hasn't taken it yet. Um, but again, if you so if you have questions on this first one on the on the logical fallacy, uh, send me an email and we'll we'll go into it in more detail there. Um, that way, I won't be giving out uh, the answers to someone who hasn't taken it yet. Uh, question two: There was there was a, a typo on the second one. Identify the conclusion. Um, maybe that's maybe that's giving giving some away. Um, so depending on what you chose. Uh, the uh, web campus selected the wrong one as as correct, but I did give points back if I saw that you had selected the correct answer um, as for the conclusion. So there was a typo there. Um, but for for this one, so you choose what is the premise, what is the conclusion, and then the fallacy. So um, there are a few ones here to choose from. Again, I have to be vague, so <laughs> uh, apologies for that, but. The, the solutions will be available, um, I believe, after tomorrow or maybe tomorrow. I'll have to double check on that um, so you can you can see what those are. And if you want to see these in more detail, again, um, just, just for the sake of those who haven't taken this yet, uh, and again, I have that list somewhere, yeah, right there, um, then I'm not going to go into too much detail during class, especially during this recorded lecture, but uh, send me an email, we can go through it in more detail there. Um, question three uh, is figuring out whether the deductive argument is valid and whether it is sound. Uh, so for this one, you're going to draw the Venn diagram, uh, figure out does the Venn diagram match the conclusion. Um, and then that's the first one, if you recall, 
figuring out whether it is valid and then whether it is sound, we add one more condition, uh, which is the premises have to be true. Uh, question four, again, you're, you're given a deductive arguments. So you have to uh, match the given argument with the associated Venn diagram. I think that is all that this one was. I don't think there was, yeah, just matching the Venn diagram. Uh, and then question five was just, um, it was just feedback. So as long as you gave me some feedback or even if you said, I don't have anything to, to say, or maybe that was quiz two. Um, as long as you've you wrote something, uh, you get the, the point for that. Um, so that was, that was the quiz. Again, uh, I have to be kind of vague and I, I apologize for that. Um, maybe we can go into more detail in a future class, uh, but definitely if you wanna see any of these in more detail, Again, uh, just send me an email or come to office hours and um, I'll just double check my list. Again, I, I, there are a few that missed this for, for legitimate reasons and I don't wanna give those answers um, to them because that would be uh, unfair for both them and, and the rest of the class. Um, uh, any other questions? I think I see a hand up. I was going to ask that, um, so is the quiz open right now? Um, I don't believe it is open right now. I'm gonna have to check those those settings. Um, I thought that it was open for viewing, uh, but I'm not sure that it is. So I'm gonna check those settings after class. Uh, again, I can't go into uh, too much of the <laughs> of the back background here without uh, giving answers or, or, or things like that, but I will, I will double check the, um, the settings, to make sure that you can actually view it. Um, it's, it's not open. It, so for, for those who have not taken it, um, those that had a legitimate reason and emailed me, I will be opening that up. Um, and if you missed it, uh, if you can email me, um, with a reason why, and if it's legitimate, then I can open the open the quiz. Uh, any other questions on that? Okay. Wait, I have a question. Yes. So uh, you said that the grades weren't going to be up until tomorrow. The answers will be up tomorrow. The grades are up right now. Oh, OK. Well, yeah. in that case, uh, I got a 6 out of 10. Uh, just to make sure, is that good, or do I have to retake it? Um, that's, you, you, you don't have to retake. Well, OK, let me, let me formulate the correct uh, words. Um, you're, you're not able to retake the quizzes after the due date. Um, and six out of 10 is not a bad score. It's, you know, obviously not the best score. Best score would be 10, but you guys know that. Um, so, but I will be for the mini project quizzes. Um, I will be dropping, I think it would, one or two of the lowest scores. Um, so you just want to aim for that or better for, for the, uh, the following mini projects. Ah, okay. Does does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's let's double check that since I mentioned it. Let me open up the syllabus on that. And while I'm opening that up, um, are there any other any other questions? Yeah, I had a question because you know how you said for question number two that you gave us the points if we got it right, even though it was like tripping. Yes. That that is that is correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I I did go through um, because I had to check to make sure that you wrote something for the last problem, anyways. Uh, so while I was there, I looked and and if you had the correct answer, even if it was marked wrong, I gave you the point for it. Um. Okay. So the mini projects. Yeah, I'm going to be uh, dropping the lowest two grades on on the mini projects. So. Uh, that will be an adjustment that, um, yeah, yeah, the, the lowest two for that. 
Okay. Um, any other any other questions? Then on any of the material, any of the homework. And again, I, I apologize for not being able to go into more detail on that. Um, on the uh, mini project quiz solutions, but uh, at the moment, I'm not able to be, to be more detailed than that. Okay, and I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, I will, so uh, I, I do apologize. I'm a little bit behind today. I had to go to, uh, to campus to get the vaccine. Um, and the line there was a lot longer than I expected. <laughs> so I, I wasn't able to get as much done uh, today as I had hoped. Um, but I will be posting the, um, uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be putting together a document on uh, how to use this, this uh, version, the uh, TI-30X2S um, calculator for the fractions. Uh, I wasn't able to get that um, uh, finished because I had to uh, go there. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. <laughs> I, I had to go get the the vaccine for since I'm I'm teaching uh, in person as well. Um, so I apologize for that. Uh, I will also be doing the groups. I think we're a little bit a little bit um, behind in lecture, so we'll see how that how that works out. I'm uh, probably going to extend the deadline for the for the group project. Um, but if there are no other questions, let's jump into the material. Uh, so we are at the very end of section 2A. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, also, let's go ahead and take attendance. So if you are here, if you can just type in here into the chat, uh, I would appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Okay, so we're we're at the very last part of two A, and then we we have two uh, B, and I think we can get that done today. So let's let's go ahead and 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 get that started. Uh, so with two A, um, we defined a unit. We looked at uh, unit conversions. And we saw a couple of examples of that. So uh, today we're going to start with an example from uh, using unit conversions. So let's look at an example. Let me adjust that. So that's uh, so we're still in uh, 2A. And let's look at an example here. So uh, this example. Well, let's, let's go ahead and, and uh, read it as I type first, and then we'll go through it. So we have a new sidewalk will be four feet wide, 270 feet long, and six inches deep. And we want to know how many cubic yards of concrete is needed for this sidewalk. Okay, so here um, we're given the dimensions of the sidewalk. We know that it's going to be four feet wide, 270 feet long, and six inches deep. And so we could we could draw this. I always um, like to draw a picture since I'm more of a visual learner. Uh, I try to draw things that helps. I think it, it helps sometimes to see what the process of what's going on. So we have the sidewalk. We want to know what is the uh, how many cubic yards are needed. So what is the volume that we need? So the, cub the cubic yards, we're looking at uh, the units. There will be cubic yards. And we know that it is uh, four feet wide. We know that it is 270 feet long and that it is six inches deep. So that is, that is what we are given, and we want to find the volume. Now here, if we didn't do anything else, if we just took, so remember the volume is length times width times height, or we can interchange height with depth. Um, 
if we didn't change the units, we would have uh, feet squared inches or, or square feet inches. And that's not what we want. So what we're going to do is we have to uh, convert each one of these lengths into yards uh, somewhere in this process. We could actually do it all in, in one go. And uh, also I should have uh, written this down but I didn't, this will be given. Um, again, any of the conversion factors that you need for a specific problem will be given. You don't have to memorize those. Um, so I know there are some that are not familiar with the US system, uh, some that are not familiar with the metric system and almost nobody memorizes going back and forth between the metric and the US system. So, uh, I mean, if you want to memorize that, that's fine, but it will be provided any, uh, any conversion factor. So uh, what, conversion factors are given here is that there will be 12 inches. There are 12 inches uh, per one foot. And there are three feet per one yard. So those are the conversion factors that we would need or that we do need uh, to, in order to get the uh, yards cubed for this problem. OK, so. The volume, again, is length times width times height or times depth. And so let's first look at the, uh, the length is 270 feet. And before we do anything else, let's go ahead and convert that. So here we want to convert the feet into yards. Um, so we're going to be using this second conversion factor that there are three feet per yard. And uh, we're going to then write this as a fraction. Should we have the feet in the numerator or the denominator on the top or the bottom? The when bottom. Multiply on the bottom and why? So that they could cross, um, connect the cross cancel cross cancel exactly right yeah, yeah so it can cancel so we have feet and yards on the top and here we have three feet per one yard so three goes with the feet one goes with the yard the feet will cancel let me do that in a different color so it's more visible and so now we have yards there very good okay uh, then for our width, we have four feet. And again, we're going to use the same conversion factor and we want feet on the bottom so that it will cancel. So yards goes on the top and we're still using the second one. So we have uh, three feet per one yard. And again, here the feet cancel. And I should have given myself a little bit more room, uh, but uh, let's put that here at times. And our last one is the depth, which is six inches. Now here with the inches, um, you could come up with a conversion factor converting inches to yards, but here, because we have uh, two conversion factors, we have one that goes from inches to feet and then from feet to yards, we can just use both. So the first one we wanna do, since we're in inches, we wanna convert that into feet. And so again, we have to ask ourselves, well, do we want the inches on the top or the bottom? And I'm gonna throw that to you guys. Bottom. On the bottom, and why? We're cross cancel. So we'll cancel, exactly right. So we want the inches on the bottom, feet on the top, and our conversion factor, we're using this first one, 12 inches per one foot. So the 12 goes with the inches, the one goes with the foot, and the inches cancel. Okay, so now, what we have um, on the, on the uh, first line, the first two we have in yards. The second one, are we finished with this? No, because we have to convert it to the feet to yards. Right, we're not quite finished yet. It's not in yards, it's still in feet. So we have to convert the feet to yards, good. So we, again, we use our second conversion factor. So we put the feet in the bottom so that it will cancel the yards in the top and there are three feet per one yard. So the three goes with the feet, the one with the yard. And now here the feet cancel. Okay. So let's uh, clean this up a little bit. So what we do 
is we take the numbers to the front. So we have 270 divided by three from our first uh, parentheses, first set of the parentheses. Second set of the parentheses, we have four thirds. Mm -hmm. There we go, four thirds. And then our uh, third set of parentheses, we have six and then the 12 times three is 36. So six out of 36. And then for our units, uh, notice our units here, we have yards, everything else canceled. Here we have yards, everything else canceled. And here we have yards, everything else canceled. So we end up with cubic yards or yards cubed. Okay. So now we just simplify the number. So we multiply uh, these fractions in our calculator. So we do 270 divided by three times four divided by three times six divided by 36. And we get 20 cubic yards of concrete is needed. Okay. So for this one, uh, there are two things that went into this problem. First thing is remembering uh, how we find volume. So volume is length times width times height or depth. Again, we use the height and depth interchangeably. And the second part is converting the units into the correct unit. So if I just, let me scroll up here. We wanted this in cubic yards. So we want to convert each one of these lengths into yards to give us the, the correct unit at the end. All right. And again, if you have any questions, um, let's see. Oh, do I do I have a question? I see a hand. Um, if you have a question, you can use either the, either the uh, chat or the audio. Um, but if I don't see any questions, just for the sake of time, I'll continue on. Is it, um, is it also okay uh, to just say to, your, to yourself, okay, six inches is half a foot and just go with a half foot and, and convert that to yards rather than having to go through inches, foots, yards? Uh, yes. Obvious. Um, you could do that. Uh, and the reason for that actually is, um, so you said uh, uh, six inches is half a foot. Mm -hmm. So notice that six inches per 0 0.5 feet. And this conversion factor will actually be equivalent to this one. Um, so you'll get the same answer. Uh, it might be a little bit odd because the, the, the fraction is going to have a decimal of 0.5 in it, uh, but you'll, you'll end up with the, same, with the same answer, yeah. So that's perfectly fine to use anything that is an equivalent Anything that is an accurate conversion factor will work. Yeah. So you don't have to use the one that's given. But uh, again, I will be giving those. But if you want to, uh, you could definitely use that. Yeah. OK. Very good. Uh, let's go then to a fresh page here. All right. So the last part of this, um, of this section, is uh, simplifying conversion factors with powers. Or let's, I guess, let's just uh, write that as conversion. Ooh, let me change that. Okay, conversion factors with powers. So I guess uh, I, I don't think there are any other units that we're using in this in this course that are squared or cubed that are not uh, areas or volumes. I don't want to commit to that statement, but um, let's let's start this off with an example of something that we might see. So a question that we might ask is one square yard is how many square feet? So here we're looking at two areas. One area 
we're looking at uh, the length and width was given in yards. One area of the length and width is given in feet. Well, what we know is that there is one foot, uh, not one foot, <laughs> three feet per one yard. So we can actually use this to, uh, to find the conversion factor if we're looking at converting an area from uh, square yards to square feet or back and forth. And so let's look at uh, one square yard. We would write that like this. Well, this is shorthand for one yard times one yard. Usually we combine it going the opposite way. We multiply the, uh, when we multiply the yards together, we get yard squared. But here we're going to just look at it in terms of, um, we're going the opposite way. We're kind of uh, deconstructing it. It's a yard times a yard. And now what we can do is we can use this uh, conversion factor we know for this first term. Well, here we have one yard and let's make that into a fraction. And we know there are three feet per one yard and we want the yards in the bottom, the feet in the top so that the yards will cancel. And there's three feet per one yard. So that will convert this into feet. And then we do the same thing with the second term. So with the second term, we convert, you have the one yard, convert that into feet. So that's three feet per one yard. So the yards will cancel. And so notice what we get. We have our number is three times three, so that's nine. And our unit is feet times feet is feet squared or square feet. So there are nine square feet per one square yard. So here, um, usually we're not given the conversion factors uh, for volume or area, but if we have uh, one for the single length, so in this case for a yard, then we can convert the uh, square yards into square feet. So with this, uh, how would we how would we convert a cubic yard into cubic feet? Then, what would we do in that case? Would we just add one more of the one times three, one times three, one times three? That's correct, yeah. Because if we have um, a cubic yard, then that is one yard cubed. That's a yard times itself three times. So we would just add in one more term and Again, that would be the uh, three feet per one yard. And so notice what we would get after we do some work. What we would get is 27 feet cubed. And just as a note, uh, this, this, is not, this is not acceptable on the exam. So don't do that. That's one of those, uh, yeah, don't do that. That would be, that would be bad. So maybe on your own, on your own time, uh, for this weekend when you finish the homework and you're bored, so you wanna do some mathematics because math is fun. Just pull out your math notebook, you know, the notebook you just use with mathematics and, and do the, uh, the in-between work here to see what you get. Um, all right, so that's that's conversions with with powers. So if you have a power um, and you want to look at converting it or finding the conversion factor, you're just going to use uh, the correct uh, conversion factor with just one of those. So uh, in this case, instead of using uh, yard cubed, you're going to look at, well, what is one yard? That's three feet. Use that conversion factor to convert the 
the units with with uh, squares or with cubes. Okay. So that is section uh, 2A. So had, uh, again, just that little bit left in 2A. Uh, now in section 2B, we're going to look at uh, unit analysis a little more in depth. I'm going to introduce the uh, metric system for units and uh, converting back and forth between the metric system and the US system. Okay, so section 2B is on extending unit analysis. And we're gonna start off with an example um, before we get into the uh, more complicated units, or I guess not necessarily complicated, the more uh, adding more units. Let's look at this example first. And this example is on comparing prices. So this example is something that you probably actually have done in your real life. When you go to the store, this might be something that you do. Um, Although I guess a lot of stores do this for you these days, but uh, if not, you can, let's, let's get into the example. So uh, the example is you can buy a shampoo bottle, uh, let's say a shampoo in a six ounce bottle for $3 and 75 cents. Or a 14 ounce bottle, we're going to say of the same brand. For $8 and we want to know uh, which bottle is the better deal. So that's what we want to know. Now, um, you probably already some of you probably already are on your way to solving this and that's good. Let's Let's formalize it in terms of what we've been doing with units. So notice what we have here. The price for the first bottle is 375 per six ounces. And for the second bottle is $8 per 14 ounces. And so notice if we look at the units here, we're looking at uh, dollars per six ounce for the first bottle and dollars per 14 ounce for the second bottle. In order to compare these, we want the same unit. So we want the same units. Let's say dollars per one ounce or dollars per ounce. And so what we're going to do is we just uh, simplify the fraction that is given and, and let's then look at what that what that means. So for the first bottle, we write the price again as 375 per six ounces. So we can take the Again, we take the numbers to the front, the units to the back. So we would have dollars per ounce. And what we do is we just do the 375 divided by six. So 375 divided by six gives us 0 0.625 dollars per ounce for the first bottle. So uh, what we've done here is we've taken the price and we've changed the unit um, from dollars per six ounce to dollars per ounce. So it was $375 per six ounce, which is equivalent to six point uh, six two five dollars per ounce. We do the same thing with the second bottle. And again, you probably have already done this in, in the past in your real life and probably already finished simplifying this before I even 
even type this out, but uh, let's look at the second one. So we do the same thing with the second one. The second one is $8 per 14 ounces. So again, we're going to simplify the fraction. We'll do eight divided by 14, and that will give us dollars per ounce or dollars per one ounce, which is what we want. So we plug in that into our calculator, the eight divided by 14. And uh, because the first one had three decimals, let's round to three decimals. So we get 0 0.571 dollars per ounce for the second bottle. So which bottle uh, is the better deal? The first one or the second one? I think it's the second one. It's the second one. Good. Second bottle is the better deal, unless you're the seller, in which case you would want them to buy the first bottle. So second bottle, uh, let's, let's call that the... Uh, Fourteen ounce bottle. Is the better deal. Very good. Okay. So again, that's probably something you've already done in your life. We're just uh, formalizing it here in math in a mathematical language, uh, since we're we're dealing with units in this section. Okay. Now we're going to get into the metric system. So uh, let's type this out first. It's quite a bit here that I, that we can just type out, yeah. So uh, the United States uses what is called the US customary system, which is abbreviated as USCS. And the rest of the world, or I think the majority, I think there are only um, two other countries that don't use the metric system. Uh, the rest of the world uses the international metric system, which is abbreviated as SI. Uh, personally, I prefer the metric system, but that's just personal preference. Uh, the international metric system uses just a few basic units and simplifies conversions using base 10. And so we'll, we'll see what that means shortly. Uh, but let's look at the units that we'll be using for the metric system. So length is measured in meters and we're going to abbreviate that using M uh, mass is measured in grams, and we'll use G for that. Time is measured in seconds, which is S, and volume is measured in liters, and we'll use capital L for that. So these are the, the base units, uh, what we call the base units or the basic units for the metric system. Um, so these basic units, we have meters, grams, seconds, liters. I guess uh, seconds, since time is pretty universal, uh, that's going to be the same as the US system. Now, uh, converting back and forth. So in, in the US system, uh, we can convert back and forth uh, between different scales. Uh, let's, let's focus on length. So take, for example, we can measure something in inches, or if we need some, uh, if we're looking at a longer length, we can instead use feet. And we, we know there's a conversion factor there. There are 12 inches per foot. If we need something a little bit longer than feet, we use yards. And there are how many feet per yard? Three feet. Three feet per yard, good. And I see that in the chat as well, excellent. And if we, want a, even a long, uh, you know, a, a bigger scale, we would go to miles. And there are how many yards per mile? Mm. I don't know how many yards per mile. I think it's 5,800. 
Oh, wait, I forget the feet now. 5,000 is something. Five. Right, that, that sounds about right. I honestly don't remember because I haven't, I don't have that memorized, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, no, it's, it's bigger than 1,000. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. But notice there's, there's almost no consistency there in converting between different scales. In the metric system, we use a uh, base 10. Very good. Yep. Uh, that's where we're, that's where we're headed uh, in the chat. Yep. That's exactly where we're headed. So the metric system uses base 10 uh, to simplify this. And so what we have is a prefix indicates the scale that we're looking at. So we have, um, for example, there are 10 decimeters per one meter. Uh, there are 10 centimeters per one decimeter. Or uh, stated another way, there are 100 centimeters per uh, one meter. So it goes up by powers of 10, uh, depending on what scale we want. Um, now let, let's, let's actually go to that uh, really quickly. And I should have had this open. Uh, there is a table in the book. Again, this you won't have to memorize uh, since we will be using uh, since any of the conversion factors we're going to use will be given, uh, then you don't have to memorize this, but it is useful to know and at least to see um, what these conversion factors are. So let, let me switch screens here. Let's go to Pearson. So we go to the textbook. And this is on page 91. So if you open up the textbook, you go to page 91. Let's wait for that to load. This has the prefixes in the tab uh, table uh, with the prefixes. So on the exam, for example, uh, either you would be given this table or I would just pull a line from the table that we're using. So that's this table right here, the uh, common metric prefixes. So notice there are two, there are two sides to this, two um, columns, if you will. I think of this as columns. Small values are, are going smaller in scale. So you have a meter, then smaller than that is decimeter, smaller than that is a centimeter. Um, and so here's, here's the prefix, and you just add the uh, basic unit on, on the end. So if we were looking at uh, mass, we would use grams. So it would be decigram, centigram, milligram, so on. Uh, so for the deca, there's 10 to the negative one or one tenth of a meter in a decimeter. For a centimeter, there's one one hundredth of a meter in a centimeter. So uh, the left side uh, is going in smaller scales. The uh, right side is going into bigger scales. So here, for a decameter, there are 10 meters per decameter. So uh, that's even bigger than a meter. Uh, there are 100 meters per hectometer. There are 1,000 meters per kilometer. And that was one that was mentioned in the chat. And this goes on in, in, uh, in that direction. And these, these prefixes were actually uh, borrowed for when we were, when you're doing the uh, uh, abbreviating memory units uh, for for the computer, like bytes, megabytes, gigabytes, so on. Now, uh, because the metric system uses these powers of ten, it's a little bit easier, I think, um, in that in that regard, because then you know if you're going to a different scale, you always know what you're what you are multiplying or dividing by. It's going to be ten to some power. Uh, but let's let's uh, review the powers of powers of 10 properties, uh, since we are using powers of 10 with our 
metric system. Um, so let's let's first write down that page. So page ninety one in the textbook is uh, the table of prefixes, and that's table which well, what did they call that in the textbook two point three. Okay, uh, page ninety two is uh, ninety two not zero two. Page ninety two is a review of powers of 10. Um, so that is what we're going to be looking at next. So powers of 10, again, since the metric system uses powers of 10, then let's review really quickly uh, the powers of 10. And then we'll get into some converting uh, from units within this, the metric system and then we'll expand that and look at converting between uh, units uh, back and forth between the metric system and, and the US uh, system. So uh, powers of 10. So we have some abbreviations. We have 10 to the N is a one with N zeros followed by it. So that is, so 10 squared would be 100. That's one with two zeros. Uh, 10 cubed, that's a one with three zeros, that's 1,000. If we have a negative exponent, 10 to the negative n is one over 10 to the n. Or as a decimal is 0, 0.00 continues on 0, 01, where here we have uh, n digits, and that's including the one. So uh, 10 to the negative two would be 0 0.01 since you have two digits after the decimal. So 0 0.01, again, the one is included. Um, so, well, let's, let's write that down. Uh, so a couple of examples for that. And again, I'm going to be going over these examples uh, fairly quickly for two reasons. Number one, I think the book does a better job at, at covering more of this. And number two, uh, we'll mostly be using our calculators uh, for this. So I don't want to go too much into detail on this, but um, let's, let's just look at some quick examples. So 10 to the fifth power is a one with five zeros. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And we can put in the comma to see what this is, 100,000. 100, so that would be 10 to the fifth power. If we have something like 10 to the negative fourth, we can write that as one over 10 to the fourth or one over a one followed by four zeros, one, two, three, four. So if you forget what the rule is, you could use that one out of 10, one divided by 10,000 to find the decimal or alternatively use the rule, there are four digits after the decimal, so point one, two, three, four, and the last one has to be a one. So that is what it's going to be equal to, 0. 0.0001 would be 10 to the negative fourth. Okay. So that's the abbreviation and, and you'll you see that um, when you, we'll look at the table again, but the, that's the, uh, um, what the table uses are 10 to, either a power to a negative power uh, to save on ink and to make it all fit together nicely in that table. Uh, next, we have multiplication and division of powers of 10. Okay, so if we are multiplying, if we have 10 to the n times 10 to the m power, what we do is we add the power. So that's going to be 10 to the n plus m power. And if we divide, if we are dividing, we would have 10 to the n divided by 10 to the m. What we're going to do is subtract the power. So we'll have 10 to the n minus m. And we'll see one of those in an example when we look at converting. But let's quickly look at some, some examples of just applying that to power. So if we have 10 squared 
times 10 cubed, then that's going to be 10 to what power? To the fifth power. Fifth power. And why is that? Because three plus two equals five. Because two plus three is five. Yep. Good. Uh, if we have 10 to the fifth divided by 10 squared, when we divide, we subtract. So we'd have 10 to the fifth minus two or 10 cubed. OK. So again, I'm not going to go into too much uh, detail here since the book, again, for, for those two reasons. Number one, the book does a good job of uh, showing this in detail. And number two, we're mostly going to be using our calculators for this. Um, but I do uh, want to at least show you how you would do it by hand. Uh, the last rule we have is a power to a power. And this one, I don't think, I don't think we need that for this homework. I don't think I put any of those in, uh, but let's go ahead and just review it. Power to a power. If we have 10 to the nth power and this raised to a power to the m, then in this case, we multiply the powers, 10 to the n times m. All right. So that's a quick review of powers of 10. And again, uh, that, that was a very quick review. Um, page 92 in the textbook, there is a, a better, uh, well, a more comprehensive review of this. Um, mostly what I wanted to cover is this, this first part, the 10 to the n, 10 to the negative n, and then the multiplication and division. So now let's look at converting between units uh, within the metric system. So if we have uh, two units, one, uh, both are metric units, how do we convert back and forth between them? So an example here, this first example, let's convert 2,358 meters, uh, maybe Let's write this out, meters to kilometers. All right. So the first thing that you're going to want to do when you are looking at this type of problem um, for the, well, for the homework is you'll be using that, that table. Uh, so we'll go back to the table in just a moment. Um, Well, I guess on the test, I might have the table or I might just tell you what the conversion factor is. But uh, so let's look at what our base units are. Our base unit here is meters. So we have meters and this one is meters. And so we want to identify the prefixes. This one has the prefix kilo. So we have a prefix kilo. This one has no prefix. So it is just the base unit. That's going to make life easier for us. Uh, but the next example after this one, we'll, we'll see what happens if, uh, if both are not the base unit. So now what we do is we look at the table 2.3 in the textbook. So let's go to that as soon as my computer catches up with my writing. There we go. So let's go to our textbook here. So we go to our textbook and we look for kilo, uh, since that is our prefix. We look for the prefixes that we have. And so here, kilo is on the right side. Right here, it looks like it's not going to select that. Oh, it does a little bit. Kilo, the abbreviation is K and it's 10 cubed. So from the textbook, let's, I'm gonna copy the, or copy this down from the table. Uh, we have kilo, and the next part that's important, it's 10 cubed. So that is the part of the table that we are taking. So 
what this tells us is there are 10 cubed meters per one kilometer. Okay, so that right there is our conversion factor. So that comes from the table itself, table 2.3. All right. So now let's go ahead. Now that we have our conversion factor, we can convert the uh, given unit, the meters into uh, kilometers. So we have 2,358 meters. Can let's turn that into a fraction. We're multiplying by this conversion factor. Do we want meters on the top or the bottom of this conversion factor? On the bottom. On the bottom, because we want the meters to cancel. And we have kilometers here. So the meters would cancel. And here there's 10 cubed goes with the meters. And the one kilometer goes with the, or the one goes with the kilometers. And so to get this into our calculator, that is 2,358 divided by 1,000. And that's kilometers. And when you plug that in, you should get 2.358 kilometers. Okay. So that is this first example. So again, with this first example, let me see if I can fit this one on the, on the page. Um, we are converting meters to kilometers. So the first thing you do is identify, well, yeah, the first thing you do is identify the prefix or prefixes that are used if there's more than one and the base unit. In this case, the base unit is meters. The prefix, uh, we only have one, which is kilo. You find all of the prefixes on the table. In this case, the kilo was 10 cubed and that gives you your conversion factor. So there are 10 cubed of the base unit, in this case, meters per one kilo meter. Uh, so that's our prefix there. And so then once you find the conversion factor, you're just converting it as normal. Okay. Now, let's look at something that does not have just the base unit, that has uh, two things, uh, two prefixes. So let's look at an example here. Second example. Let's convert 2.1, we've done meters, so let's pick on grams now. Hectograms to milligrams. Okay. So again, the first thing that we do is we look at what is our base unit and what are our prefixes. So for this example, the base unit we're using is grams. So that is uh, mass. And what are then the prefixes? So for the first one, we have hecto. So that is one prefix. And then for the second one, we have mil milli or milli which is our second prefix. So we go to our table, table 2.3 on page 91. So let's go to our table here. And we wanna find both of those prefixes. So first let's look for hecto. Uh, so I'm not seeing that on the left. Here it is on the right. Hecto is 10 squared. So we're going to go, let's go back to our digital paper. I'm going to start, I'm going to just copy that portion of the table. Again, that portion of the table that we need. And we're doing two, so I'm gonna have two rows. So here we have hecto and that was 10 squared. Okay, the other one was uh, milli. So let's go back to our table and find milli. And this time it's on the left-hand side and that is 10 to the negative 
third. So let's write that down. So here we have 10 to the negative third. All right. So from the table, this is, this is from uh, table 2.3. That's on page 91. From the table, this gives us our conversion factors. In this case, we'll have two. So it's going to be uh, 10 squared of the base unit per hecto unit. So in this case, 10 squared grams per one hectogram. And the second part of the table gives us our second conversion factor. So there are 10 to the negative third of the base unit grams per one milligram. So those are our two conversion factors. Okay. Any questions so far or are we feeling okay about this? Or feeling that we might need might need to spend a little bit more time in the textbook for this one. I don't know. Metric system can be a little bit tricky if you're not used to it. Okay, uh, let's continue on. So here, we're notice we're using two conversion factors. So we're, we want to go from hectograms to milligrams. From the table, we're converting to our base unit. So notice we're going to go from hectograms to grams, and then from grams to milligrams. So we're going to have two of our conversion factors here. Okay, unfortunately, I can't uh, do any more on this page. So let me go to the next page, to a clean page here. So we have, uh, let me go back. How many was it? 2.1, 2.1 hectograms. We make this into a factor, a fraction, sorry, by dividing by one. Now we're gonna multiply by a conversion factor that has the hectograms and grams. Now here we want the hectograms on the bottom because we want that to cancel and the grams on the top. And what our conversion factor for, for that was, was 10 squared grams per one hectogram. Okay. So the hectograms cancel. Now, this is in grams. We're going to use our second conversion factor, convert this into milligrams. So uh, the milligram one, we want the milligrams on top and the grams on bottom so that the grams will cancel. And from our table, it was 10 to the negative third grams per one milligram. Okay. So let's simplify this. Take our numbers to the front. So we have 2.1 times, let's do our powers of 10, 10 squared divided by 10 to the negative third. And our units are now in milligrams. So here we have our, we are dividing by, well, we have a division by a power of 10. So we have our 2.1 still. And when we divide, what do we do with the powers? We subtract. We subtract, good. So we'd have 10 squared minus the bottom power is negative three, and that's milligrams. Well, two minus a negative three is two plus three, so that's 2.1 times 10 to the fifth milligrams, or uh, 2.1 times a one with five zeros. You plug that into your calculator, and what you should get is 210,000 milligrams. So 2.1 hectograms is 210,000 milligrams. Okay. 
So again, for this one, let me go back to the first to the uh, previous page. We want to convert, uh, and we're converting in the metric system itself. So we're converting from hectograms to milligrams. So the first thing we do is we identify the base unit, which are grams, and the prefixes. Here we had two prefixes, hecto and milli. We go to our table on page 91, and we find those two uh, prefixes in the table, and we record what the uh, power of 10 that corresponds with that is. And that gives us our conversion factor. So again, it's 10 squared of the base unit per hectogram. That was our first line of the table that we used. The second line of the table that we used was the milli, uh, which is 10 to the negative 3. So there's 10 to the negative 3 of the base unit. So in this case, grams per 1 milligram. So then once we have those, we use our conversion factors as normal. And that gives us our, our result. Okay. The next portion of this is converting from the metric system to the US system or back running back and forth between the metric system and the US system. And for this one, we're going to use table 2.4, which is on page 93. Now these ones, I personally don't know anybody who has these memorized. Um, I'm sure there's probably somebody that has, but I'm not going to make you memorize these. So I will either include the table or I will include the necessary uh, conversion factor. So let's look at the table really quickly here. So this one is on page 93. So skip a couple of pages and scroll down. So right here, table 2.4 right here uh, gives us conversions from the uh, US system to the metric system. And so if we look at this first line, one inch is, there's one inch per 2.540 centimeters, or there's one centimeter uh, per 0 0.3937 inches. Uh, we can use either one. So I'm mostly just going to be using the first one. Um, so let's look at a quick example for that. So one example uh, that you might run into is how long is a five kilometer race in miles? So let's say that you are uh, training for a five, five kilometer, a 5K race. Uh, but the track that you're training on is only has distances in miles. You want to, you know, uh, train for that. So you want to know, all right, how many miles do I need to run to, to properly train? So what you're going to do is you're going to look at the table. So, um, or for the homework, you'd look at the table for the, uh, if this is given on the exam, you will either have the table as a reference page, or it will be in the actual problem. So here we want to look at miles and kilometers. And we notice right here on, what is this? The fourth line down, one mile equals 1.6093 kilometers. So there's one mile per 1.6093 kilometers. So let's write that down. So from the table, table 2.4, one mile equals 1.6093 kilometers. And we can think of this equal as per, there's one mile per 1.6093 kilometers. And this gives us our uh, conversion factor. So five kilometers, we write this as a fraction. We multiply by our conversion factor. We want kilometers 
on the bottom, so that will cancel, and miles on the top. And from our conversion factor here, from what we had from the table, one goes with miles, and 1.0, uh, sorry, 6093 goes with kilometers. So we do five divided by, use our calculator, five divided by the 1.6093, and we get three point, let's do two decimal places, one, one miles. So in this case, if you are training for a 5K race, but the racetrack you're running on is only uh, measured in, in miles as the distance, then you want to run uh, 3.1, 3 and a tenth miles approximately to train for that race. OK. Um, there is a, one more thing, uh, one more example of a conversion that I want to do in uh, going from the um, metric system to the US system. But we'll do that next time because uh, we're just about out of time. So that is, OK, so that is almost all of 2B. Um, just one example short. So uh, you should be able to do, <clears throat> excuse me, you should be able to do the majority of the homework, um, if not all of it. Um, so if you have time, definitely I would recommend trying that out. Uh, but the, uh, we'll, we'll finish that next class, finish up to be in start uh, chapter three. So we, we're, we're still a little bit behind schedule in terms of lecture, but I think we'll, we'll catch up. And then uh, next class will, I think next class, uh, I might also want to take some time um, to give to you guys for the group projects. That will either be next class or, or next Tuesday. So um, I'll get those uh, groups sorted by tonight. And uh, we'll use either sometime next class or on uh, the next Tuesday for that. Um, OK, so uh, any questions before I let you guys go? Just to clarify, the homework we're supposed to do is 2A and 2B. Uh, yes, so 2A we finished, so that will be due this weekend, and 2B we just have one example, so that for sure will finish. Um, I'm hoping to finish 3A, but if but we may or may not finish that, so we'll see um, depending on how, how next class goes. So for sure 2A and 2B, 2B will be due, as well as, uh, since that's chapter 2, as well as the uh, mini project quiz 2. Uh, any other questions? Oh, yeah, I have I a question. A... My bad. Okay, yeah. Why I go first? Yeah, go ahead. Um. Uh, so I finally got the textbook, but when I tried looking for the pitch number where the access code for my lab was, I couldn't find it. Um. What do you know the page number or do I have to keep looking? Um, so you bought a, a new textbook? Yeah. I think it should be, I'm actually not sure. I think it should be in the very front, but um, sometimes the- I like that. Sometimes the, um, the, the publisher puts it in different places depends on on the publisher so i would i would uh i would contact the pearson support to see where where that should be um but if you purchased it at new then it should have one in there somewhere i just don't know uh usually i think the ones that i've seen have been in like the very uh front right like right after the cover but i'm not entirely well, sure well i looked at the very front and it wasn't there uh, yeah, so I would contact the web assigned support. So they'll they since since their since it's their textbook, they will for sure know where that should be. Okay, thanks. Uh, mm -hmm. And there was another question. Yeah, I had a question about the volume when you were doing the metric units. 
And then you said that um, volume is measured in liters. Is yes. it always cubed like the other time? Um, in this case, no. Uh, so oh. it, would, it's just, it would just be liters, yeah. Okay. Yep, so it's kind of, it's one of those weird uh, units like how, um, I think in the last class we saw acres was a measure of area and it's, it's not squared. Um, liters is one of those weird ones where it measures volume, but it's not cubed. So, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah so it's it's uh, it's one of those weird weird ones. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and stop there. Um, uh, let me close that. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and stop there. Uh, I do have office hours tonight if you need it. If you have not already uh, typed here in the chat, please make sure to do that before you leave so that I can record that you were here in attendance. Um, and thank you for coming. Thank you for your patience. I will see you on oh. Thursday. When are your office hours for um, Office hours for today are from 5.45 to 6.30. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And I will see you next okay. class.